But let me quickly say hello to uh, Gary and Martinez. We told you we'd come back taking your calls. Gary Martinez, you're on 95.7 The Game. Hello. Hey, fellas. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Hey, so I don't think it's uh, it's not a horrible boohoo moment in my book because, you know, there's not too many specimens that come along. I know he's still young at 30, but six, seven, three hundred 300 pounds, um, you know, to a long deal for a hat, dang near half a billion dollars. You know, there's a good chance that this could turn out poorly. So, you know, I know he's in his prime. I know there's other options, but, you know, there's a good chance this, this guy could run into some injuries. And a body specimen that big, I don't think history has been on his side. That's Gary. Fellas, I appreciate y'all. Gary, you're, you're leading me right into my list of why not spending this amount of money on Aaron Judge is not the worst thing that ever happened to the San Francisco Giants. And I'm not trying to save them a dime. I'm not. I'm not. This contract, though, is 100% built to fail. 100% built to fail. And, you know, maybe that is now just the standard operating procedure and the norm for major league contracts for top-tier, high-priced free agents. But... You know, only the Yankees and Dodgers really have the financial gravitas to deal with a contract like this built to fail in its final few years. And that's just, I, I, I think Aaron Judge knows this is a, a ridiculous deal. Aaron Judge's agent, the Yankees know that. Everyone in the world knows that. And for a guy who is 31 years old, he does have injuries in his past, and he is big. I mean, he's a really big guy. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're absolutely asking for it, almost in the way that, you know, the Anaheim Angels asked for it when they extended so much money to Albert Pujols. Um, yeah, but you know what? Players get hurt. If you're worried about that, then don't get in the bidding for anybody ever. Hey, in Mitch fact, Haniger, right? Mitch yeah. Haniger missed most of last year. Exactly. I mean, it just you can't sort of process it that way. Right. The truth is, every team in baseball could do this deal. The choice is, are you going to have buyer's remorse in, in year six? Well, year six is six years away. You know, you've got to strike while you've got what you've got. And the Giants' pursuit of Judge makes perfect sense to them because it does reinvigorate the market for them. It's not just a baseball deal in the same way that the Pujols deal was not just a baseball deal for the Angels. It's, you know, how do we get not just buzz, because you can't monetize buzz, but do we get a better local media deal? Do we... You know, do we enhance our place in the market? Because they're in competition with the Warriors, who are just right down the street from them. You know, it's there's a lot of things that are in play here. And the fact that they don't get judge means they have to win on the baseball end because they couldn't win on the splash end. Well, and you're right. I mean, you're right about that. And we have also seen in the past that just a winning product doesn't exactly draw them like, you know, flies to honey the way that it used to. They had attendance problems while they were winning 107 games, and you can also say, pandemic, indeed, you would be right. But 107 wins normally means, man, this place is packed each and every night, and it was anything but that. And I think that that is a, a reality that the giant Giants ownership obviously wanted to avoid it, but they weren't willing to spend on the marquee guy that would have helped them avoid it. So this brings me to my other point. They have at least $360 million more million to spend during this free agency. I know it for a fact, and we all do now. And that's a lot of money to throw around at a lot of talent. And like you said, maybe you got to overpay and pretend that that third-tier pitcher is more of a number two guy. Fine, do that. Do that for Chris Bassett. You should probably get that deal done because his price goes up by the hour. Carlos Rodon, I would absolutely pivot back and say, look, man, for guys, you know, with with your shoulder problems throughout your career, we don't feel good about a seventh year. Nobody does. So we'll overpay you through five. We'll go above and beyond through six. I mean, really, if you think about it, the Giants should just let Farhan go platoon bonkers all over his lineup since that's what he gets off doing as a general manager. And they should have just signed 
you know, they should they should keep Rodon and added Verlander. I say what you want about star power and Giants lineups. I have seen the San Francisco Giants, Ray, and you have too, win three world championships inside the ballpark that no one wants to come to because they pitched it and they caught the ball. Pitching and defense is how you go about winning, and that should be now the pivot point of the rest of this free agency. Carlos Correa, Xander Bogarts, Dansby Swanson. You want to go ahead and do that? Do that. Who did um, uh, the Japanese position player just signed? Tanaka. Uh, yeah. Uh, 85, uh, 90 million to the Red Sox plus a $15 million finder's fee to the Oryx Buffalo. So Masataka Yoshida? Yeah. Uh, in, the guy's an on-base machine. That was going to be one of the lists of names that I had for the Giants to maybe go after. So Brandon Nimo. Uh, Nimo. Nimo. What, in, I screwed Nimo. up the Japanese name. You screwed up the American. Fair, but I screwed it up two days in a row now. Well done to you. Um, thank you. Uh, this is... There's a lot of money to spend on a team that needs more than just a power hitter. So go out and do that now, Farhan. I, I will just say this, too. It's not quite as embarrassing as the most self-loathing Giant fan feels about this. It's the Yankees. Those pinstripes are powerful. Those pinstripes are powerful, and once you become not just a Yankees player, but a in-the-moment Yankees icon because you're the only homegrown offered player who just happened to set the American League record for single-season home runs, it's the Yankees. It's the Yankees. I mean, like, I look, you don't want to hear it, but you're lying to yourself if you actually think the San Francisco Giants sit on the same level of Major League importance as the New York Yankees. You're out of your mind if you think that. The Dodgers don't even think that. Nobody thinks that because thinking that would be crazy. It's the Yankees. It's the Yankees for a guy who's already a Yankee. Right. I mean, but here, here would be my point. The Giants have to play in that market. Because if you just say, ah, gee, he's, he's going to go to the Yankees anyway, let's not bother. That's the message where the fans go, okay, so you actually don't care. But they did bother. And they did bother. You're, and they're supposed to bother. The truth is, yeah, well, are there better ways to spend $360 million? Yeah, probably. But the Giants have to free up that money, first of all, so that other te other players see... Hey, they're available. I mean, maybe that's maybe that's the long-term play, which is the Giants are willing to throw money like that around. Now, maybe the 360 was only for Judge, and maybe their budget shrinks when it's not Judge. But you can still get Dansby Swanson and two pitchers. That's probably going to help more than just Judge in a pure baseball sense. Absolutely. I, I, I look. I agree. But, I, I, and you know. The whole, well, they haven't done anything. They haven't done anything is not the way to describe what's happened so far. Mitch Hanniger, sexy. Do you have a Mitch Hanniger jersey? No, you don't. Are you going to go out and run out and get one before you see what he does for this team? No, you're not. But he's got, he's, he's a real major leaguer. He's not a false major leaguer. He's the kind of major leaguer that any team in baseball would be happy to give 550 at-bats to if he's healthy enough to do that. The only problem with that is if Hanniger's all they get. Right. Hanniger's, he's not alone. Hanniger has to be the first of about three or four signings. Right. And if they don't do that, then Giants fans can feel like we got taken for a walk. Because Mitch Hanniger alone doesn't turn this team around. It doesn't make it a more dynamic offense. He's got to be the first in a series and that's where the details are if i'm if i'm the giants i'm looking at carlos Rodon and say you want seven fine seven we'll worry about the back end of your contract when the back end of your contract comes i mean they've eaten bad contracts before and they've bit against themselves before with with barry zito and people laughed at him for that but they weren't laughing when zito came up with you know those big starts in the postseason 
that alone made that worth the money. But if you have to, if you have to give a guy too much term, and that's the nature of the beast now. You know, if you need a guy bad enough, you'll take his bad years as well as his good ones. You don't, ha you don't get that choice anymore when a guy's a free agent. And I also think that that's another reason why the Yankees, you know, did what they did because a little back pay for Aaron Judge makes sense to them. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's done a lot for them. So um, here's the final element of why signing him isn't so bad. And, Ray, this is hands down going to be your favorite. We won't have to deal with, like, 5,000 people wearing powdered wigs and judge robes at the ballpark each and every night. Like, that That would have been cute to begin with, even though it's unoriginal because they do it in New York. Um that was the NBC Sports Bay Area was going to camera screw us to death with those cutaways. I feel better off without them. Oh, they're going to find reasons to do that with Hanniger too. They're going. They found ways to do that with Melky Cabrera. But they, NBC that was fake. Of course, the it was. Melkman was fake. But the truth is, NBC is going to do that anyway. And and even if all they end up getting is Brandon Nimmo. They'll find a way to do that too, like little Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, exactly. that's, yeah, 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 it'll happen. So yeah, uh, the NBC thing. I mean, that's a sunk cost. They're gonna they're gonna gimmick it up because they they've always done that. By the way, speaking of uh, up, we have reached the top of the hour. Welcome everyone to your four o'clock hour. You're listening to ninety five seven The Game, KGMZ FM and HD One San Francisco. Always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. Damn well, better be free. We are coming to you live from the Guardsman Tree Lot. Damon and Ratto down here for our annual show. If you have any holiday needs, boy, come on down to the Guardsman Tree Lot. We got you covered with whatever you might need. Believe me, we have it from lights to ornaments, bells, baubles, the tree itself, bouncy houses for the kids, and uh, all sorts of fun activities down here. A little indoor winter wonderland can be yours, and every penny that you spend down here goes to help Bay Area at-risk youth. Uh, you were talking about Brandon Nimmo. We've got Brandon Ayuk joining us in about 15 minutes. It's our one deviation from Aaron Judge pity party that we've been throwing all day. But I, honestly, one of the things that I was saying, uh, uh, you know, talking about this on, on Twitter with a few fans, you know, they went to say, well, the Giants, the Giants need a star. They need a star. They need a star. Let me let me ask you this. Was Pablo Sandoval a star? Was Pablo Sandoval a star? He was here. He was here, but he wasn't anywhere else, believe me. Like, the Giants can cobble together some good stories and reasons to come to the ballpark when you got players that actually go out and start to win. And how far away are they from winning? You know, I... I really don't know, but for everyone wanting to kind of frame the Giants as this group of perpetual, you know, losers now, like you just got to calm down and feel free to live in reality because to me, in order to be labeled a loser, you have to have a losing record. And in the last two years, the Giants do not have a losing record. It was the least exciting 81-81 and 81 ever offered to a fan base. I'll give you that last year. The year before that, you won more games than in any other season in the 140 years of Giants baseball. And for everyone to be out there just framing Farhan as an idiot today, remember where you were a year ago. Farhan and Gabe Kapler, they can do no wrong. Look at all the strings that they're pulling. They're like the merry, you know, they're, they're the puppet masters, moving the marionettes perfectly. You don't go from being really good at what you do to total bumbling, incompetent nincompoops overnight. And honestly, this is the level of money where Farhan can only make the offer. He wasn't controlling the bid in the first place. He really wasn't. This was above no. him, even. Oh, of course it was. You, when you're talking about this money, this is that's an ownership call. Um, and the other thing is, fans when they get, you know, when they don't get what they want, they sound like the kid who's going to hold his breath till he turns blue because he didn't get a pony under the tree at Christmas. You don't get a pony this time. You, you shut up. Move on. You know, take take the train set instead. That's what they offered. You know, it's up to 
here's what here's what's up to Farhan Zaidi. You've got Hanniger. Show us what else there is. Show us that you, if you can't make the big splash, make a bunch of decent splashes so that your lineup is more representative and you've got pitching. I mean, their mo his most interesting acquisitions might be bullpen guys. And there's no sexy bullpen guy. Kenley Jansen just signed with the Red Sox. He's not a sexy get anymore. Nope. But he's useful. Get some useful pitchers in the bullpen. Because last year you got your brains kicked in with that. You know, that's an improvement to the team. And that is Farhan Zaidi's department. Not nailing down Aaron Judge. You could say, well, it's his fault for not offering more. Well, no, he's not the guy who make, gets to make that offer. He, I mean, you know, that's a Charlie Johnson thing. That's a Greg Johnson thing. It's not a Farhan Zaidi thing. Farhan Zaidi constructs teams. He doesn't buy them. He's very good on the margins. He has been. And look, Farhan, for those, there's a lot of Farhan's an idiot conversations happening today. So I owe Farhan nothing. Ray, you owe Farhan absolutely nothing. He's never even been on this show. Farhan's got zero love when it comes to 95-7 the game. I'm not preserving a relationship. It would be my pleasure to tell you that he stunk at his job if he did. He doesn't. Could you do better? Maybe. Maybe. Could you do worse? Absolutely. Absolutely you could. Is his clock ticking louder than ever before with the fan base? Yeah. But with ownership, it's not. Not yet. It's not. Not yet. Not yet anyways. The thing that Giants fans are, I think, a little delusional here with is they're, they're, they still think that they need to go out and replace Barry Bonds. And I want to remind you that when Barry Bonds was here, as compelling, as exciting, as great, as must-watch as he truly was, he did not help them win the ultimate prize. He did. They did not win a World Series on, you know, during Barry Bonds' contractual years with the San Francisco Giants. They did not. They came close, but they did not. And he had a great series then. So, yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know, so he did everything he could do. He did. Um, and look, the last time the Yankees were playing high leverage baseball, Aaron Judge did not necessarily do everything he could do, which led to some booing, which a lot of people thought, hey, maybe that's going to lead him to the Giants after all. It's not that the Giants haven't replaced Barry Bonds that I think really, really upsets fans here. They haven't even replaced Hunter Pence. That's the problem. That's the problem. Barry Bonds is like saying, you know, what this team needs is the Big Dipper. You know, what are you doing? We're collecting constellations. Which one do you need? Well, we need another Big Dipper. Well, okay, can't give me the Big Dipper? How about the, the Small Dipper? Hey, hey, how about Cassiopeia, okay? You're not quite in the Dipper department. Go and get someone to replace Hunter Pence. I saw this broken down. It was by Jason Stark. So Aaron Judge last year, in the first half, hit 33 of his home runs. He came back in the second half, and he hit 29 more. 29 home runs would be the most by a giant in any season since Barry Bonds left. Brandon Belt got the 29 home runs once. 27 home runs would be the most by a right-handed giant since Hunter Pence. The Giants, of course you want the star. Of course you want the guy who is guaranteed just having him in the lineup means you're selling 3,000 more tickets tonight than you were going to anyways. But the truth is, they need major league hitters. And I'm going to tell you, Mitch Haniger is one. Sexy? No. Enough all by himself? Clearly not. But he's a real live, actually producing veteran major leaguer that anyone would want to give 500 at-bats to. And the frustration, apparently, you know, the, the, the anger... A tad misplaced because I can also tell you this, that the free agency is not over. The Giants free agent class being done and opening day are still two days that are very far apart from each other. So everyone needs to calm down just a little when it's officially time to say this team did not do 
its due diligence, did not have a good offseason. Ray and I will let you know when that time is. We'd be we'd be 445. We'd be thrilled to let you know when they've officially botched it. It's kind of what we do. It's our brand. They we're, haven't botched it yet. Yeah, we're despicable human beings, but we'll be despicable when it's time. When to be it's despicable. time, exactly. We're like going, I said, 445. We're going to measure out the despicability at appropriate amounts in time.